Hello everybody. Uh, I wasn't really going to record this because I was just playing around with some colors. Um, but I kind of like the way that turned out. So in case I can duplicate it, I thought it would be good to share. So, <clears throat> um, Shelly did a really cool pour, I don't know how long ago, using similar colors. And I don't usually really care for brown. And so I was thinking... This would be a great way to try it. So I rewatched the video and I um, attempted it with the colors that I have that are similar. And I also tried a copper cell activator for the first time. And I, I don't have all the lights on in here, so sorry. But um, honestly, really beautiful. So I'm going to tell you how I layered them and try to do one with you guys. And... Um, this is also a fun way for me to try some of my primary elements that I have mixed up that I haven't used. And I might try different ways of layering them to see how, um, how the results vary. Now I do have some spots. You see those spots? That's either from my white paint that's in the middle or from my pillow paint. So just in case I poured my pillow paint out and I put a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol in it which helps a lot so I'm gonna set this down over here somewhere <clears throat> but I don't think it's my pillow paint because I used it last night and I didn't have spots I think it is my white paint which is a bummer I probably could do the same I could probably put a little alcohol in it but <clears throat> I think I'll just deal with the spots if they come up they don't really look that bad so um, uh, I layered these with quite a few colors and in her pour she only used three colors in a cell activator and she used Atelier, I always say that wrong, Interactive Copper, which I don't have yet. So I'm using Amsterdam Copper as a cell activator, which honestly worked really well, to be honest. So uh, the ingredients I use for the Bloom recipe are in the description box below. And I'm going to tell you about the colors as I layer them. So this color is a metallic deep brown from Arteza. I've never used the Arteza metallics yet in my Bloom recipe. And I will say I like the consistency for Blooms. They're like soft body, so they don't really have to be overly thinned down, which is really nice. But this is like a really deep chocolate color. So we're going to put that on the bottom. <clears throat> and I'm on vacation today, so I'm playing around with some colors, which is why I'm doing tiles and not a real painting. Plus, I have a painting in there on the table, taking up most of the space. <clears throat> so there's that one. This one is a gorgeous color. It's called Autumn Leaf from Color Art. And I was just going to use this one because it really matches kind of what I had in mind. But I also wanted to add the Butter Toffee from the new Putting on the Glitz set. I've seen a couple people use it recently and it's so pretty. I also want to try using Nutmeg. And I thought about putting it in here too. But So this is the Butter Toffee. It's definitely got a little bit more of a yellowish gold tone. So I kind of just put a little in there. And then on top of that, we're going to put a little titanium white. This is a mixture of some Amsterdam I already had mixed up. And this is where my bubbles are coming from, I can tell you by looking at it. And I'm going to thin it out a little bit. Thin it out with just a little bit of varnish and water. Uh, Shelly shared uh, a good way to thin out your tube paint if you have to use water is a three-part water to one part varnish ratio so that's what I'm doing in case you're wondering and so far it has really worked well but that is where my uh, bubbles are coming from I can tell and this is way too much white I don't know why I'm just going crazy with the white oh okay 
And then I added a little bit of Amsterdam light gold in between the white and the black. Amsterdam light gold is honestly one of my favorite colors, but it is so thick. So it takes a lot to get it thin enough, but it, it's a beautiful color. And this is gold and carbon black. So all of these are mixed with the bloom base. And we're really just putting the black and white in for contrast. <clears throat> and then here is our copper cell activator. Now, one of the things I've been doing and I did a lot last night is I've been trying to blow out my blooms without tools because I'm really not great at blowing them out. <laughs> so pardon my big head that's about to get in the way. I'm really trying to practice at that um, to get a little bit more adept at blowing them out because then you have a little bit more control over them. And even if you use blow dryers or whatever after that, it still helps. So I'm getting better at it. Sorry about my big head, but um, very cell reactive the Amsterdam is. But <clears throat> it takes a lot. Uh, I like to do the little leaf blower for tiles, but sometimes I like the the way you can evenly move your cells around when you do it yourself. So that's what I'm trying to work on. Um, just so that I have the skill to blow it out however I want. I'm also not great with a hair dryer, so I'm trying to get better at that. So if you see a lot of practicing, that's, that's what it takes. And I do have people that reach out to me about blooms and tips and all that. And I will tell you, as much as we all love to help everyone um, learn from people, but you have to find out what works for you because what works great for me is not what works great for every other artist. And vice versa. I see some people do something and I'm like, I'm going to try that. And I try it and it bombs. So we can tell you, hey, this helps me, but um, you really have to make it your own. Everybody has things that they're great at and things that they're not. And this technique is not easy. There's not necessarily a quick fix to making it easy, but with practice, anyone can do it. So Keep, uh, keep practicing. The cells right here are really cool. There's one part I don't love. Oh, it's not ready yet. You can tell it's not ready because the middle doesn't move with the sides. So the middle is still coming together. I don't like this that much. Mostly because it has no reacting. So I'm just blowing on it a little to see if it'll open up. It probably means when I blew it, I blew down into the pillow, which is what I don't like. But honestly, the colors are really beautiful. Let's spin it and see. Ooh, that is not going well. So I'm going to see if I can't get some of it to go the other way. All the beautiful stuff is trying to fly off the side. Figures the one I do that's not on camera turns out probably the best, right? That's the way it always goes. That's why most of the time, as a general rule, if I'm going to paint, I film it. If it sucks, sometimes I share it anyway. If not, then I can go back and look to see what I did. Most of the time, even if it's terrible, I share it. Most of the time. There are some exceptions. <clears throat> now I will say that putting the light gold below the black is causing the white to have kind of a yellowish tint, which is cool, but it's also picking up the, the colors underneath it because they're so pigmented. I 
really wish I could make this go away. I don't hate it. I just there's always one corner that like doesn't play well with others. But I think if it's resined, it'll go really nicely with the set. I do know that the bubbles are coming from the white paint now. I wonder if putting a tad bit of alcohol in there would help that. I don't know if that's allowed. I guess it's allowed if you practice, right? There's some really beautiful little cells here. I wish I could get them to open up. But I also don't want to overstretch it where it doesn't look nice. But yeah, this is a really nice neutral color palette. And, um, you know, since I'm putting them on tiles, they're probably going to go in someone's home. So it's kind of nice to do the neutrals. Give it one small spin. Make sure there's enough paint off. And let's see. I think I like them. They're not perfect. There's a huge bubble right here. But I'll give it one more go before I just go back to painting solo. Sometimes it's kind of therapeutic to not really worry if it's going well or not. But then those are the times that you paint something and you're like, oh my gosh, I love that. And then probably won't even remember what you did. Okay, so I use like a little spatula. It's like a plastic painting spatula. I got it at the Dollar Tree. I never use it for painting, but I use it for this kind of thing. I used a little too much white and black, maybe. <clears throat> oh, let me see. So there's a pretty crazy bubble right here. Sometimes I don't mess with the bubbles because then you get down to the pillow paint and you have to kind of fix that. But sometimes you can tell it's going to be difficult to fix later. So and we're just getting all the drips. If you don't get the drips, sometimes they will keep dripping and um, pull your paint off. There was also a corner that wasn't covered. So if that happens, if you take a tile or something off and you notice a corner is not covered, sometimes you can pick up the edge. Um, I can't really show you without potentially dropping it. But you can pick up the edge of something that's on your, your spinner and just kind of help it ease down. It's not going to be perfect, like the corner is not perfect. But I'm also not going to wreck the composition of the whole tile for a corner. I've done that too many times. Look at that. Really pretty, huh? Let me get a K-cup. Set this guy down. I think these are going to be honestly really beautiful. Who knew? Brown. <clears throat> I'll relocate them to a drying table shortly, but... <clears throat> we'll do another one together. Um, also, my hands get super dirty, and I've always wondered what do people do about all of the paint that's on their hands. Obviously, ideally, you don't want to put it down the drain, right? But sometimes you're like, how else am I supposed to get it off my hands? Well, baby wipes. Baby wipes are super helpful, in case you wanted to know. That's free for you. All right, let's do the deep pearl brown on the bottom. I'm tempted to just do a couple of other colors with you guys, but I don't want this video to be super long. People lose attention. I am a person who will watch a whole long video, but that's not the general consensus. <clears throat> I'm also the person who likes people to talk in their videos. Even if it's like time consuming, I would rather hear what's going on. Because with my attention uh, deficit, if there's music, like I'll like tune out what's happening and I'll be like, wait, how did they get there? <laughs> and then, ew, a go globby, globby thingy. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, let's do another one. I need to check this. Hold on. It was like where the paint dried on the side. Cool. Yeah, 
Now it looks like I have like baby poop on my fingers. Hold on. I don't, I promise. Okay. Uh, so this butter toffee is from the new Put Putting on the Glitz set. And for those of you who like primary elements or if you've wanted to try them, you need these pigments. They're gorgeous. And because they're semi-opaque, they're super versatile. And I know a lot of people struggle with the transparency or the somewhat translucency, not transparency, but the somewhat translucency of primary elements because there is a little bit of a learning curve. Like if you haven't tried them, try these and start there and then you can learn to incorporate them. <clears throat> I mean, I love them all, but sorry, I had to get that off my hands. Okay, white. Not as much this time. Last time I just went like crazy with the white. We're really just adding the white and the black for some contrast. And I'm already thinking about other things I want to try with this. So, look forward to more brown. I like them though. I think they're pretty. Little, little gold. Spill a little, use a little. And so far, I like the way that blows out even without all the props. So, oh my gosh, when did this black get so thick? I guess it's been sitting here getting thick. That's one bad thing about using two paints and blooms is like, sometimes to get them thin enough is a serious, serious task. And then when you finally get there, you leave them out, they thicken up. You're like, come on. Okay. Okay, here we go. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. I can't believe it's already come and gone. Like every year. It's like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm gone. Okay. Like I'm maybe overdoing it, but I keep having a corner that has no cell activator. Pretty sure that's a skill issue. Okay. Sorry about my head. let that develop a little bit one of the most even I've had so far today I like the way this copper sells up I mean it sells up really nicely I feel like it's probably because it's so dense maybe y'all can see it better if I zoom you in uh, it feels like maybe because it's so dense but you see how it's still reacting um, it's really nice I like it a lot uh, I haven't tried the light gold as a cell activator, but that also could be really cool. Um, and I also like the way, because we use black and white underneath it, we're getting these like 3D looking cells. It's almost like what you see when people use multiple cell activators at a time, which I have not had success with yet. But, And I'm sorry that you guys can't see the way I'm blowing it out. I'm sure that would be helpful for some of you who are practicing. I just can't take the camera down to show you. Maybe sometimes when someone's here, we'll do better about filming the side angle. It's super embarrassing looking, but um, but I will tell you, your the principle behind blowing the cell activator is you want to think about gliding it over the colors gently, not forcefully blowing down into them. Blowing down into them is going to blow down into your pillow. And um, that's not really what you want. Oh, I just realized you can see this a lot better when I do this. This one is probably the best one yet today. Woohoo! I love that. Look at that corner. So I'm going to try to see if I can't stretch this a little bit that way. So we get some even coverage and we don't have to over tilt or over spin. 
But man, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Woohoo! And since one of the things I'm working on is not mixing up like a cell activator tower, <laughs> because then I let it go bad. It doesn't go bad, but it's not as useful. So then I let it sit there thinking I'm going to have all this time to paint, and then I don't. And then it's not as useful when it's not as fresh. So I just mixed this today. And this is a three to one ratio. Um, I added too much low trawl by accident and I had to even it out a little bit. But what the heck is going on with this side right here? But, um, but yeah, that's, I really like it so far. There's some sort of goopy thing right here. This is probably a tile I scraped. But yeah, these are going to be available for purchase if anybody wants them. It'll take me some time to get them on Etsy. You know the drill if you watch our channel. I'm getting better. And, um, of course, they're going to be resin first. Sanded, cork-backed, all that. Let's spin it. That one's my fave so far. Also, probably the best I've ever gotten without using a blow dryer or a tool of some sort smallest blower, whatever. Yeehaw. I did get this dryer that Tammy Anderson recommended for some Dutch pours for Christmas as a Christmas gift. And I was making some coasters the other day, not on camera, of course, for our friend. And I tried it and it worked pretty well on blooms. So I was kind of happy because I've never had a hair dryer that I actually could get any progress with. Look at this. Whoa. Forgot how close up you guys were. Look at that. So anyway, um, I won't put you through the last one, but super appreciate you joining me on the journey. And if you're not a subscriber, we would love for you to join us. Hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out any videos. And um, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you are, of course, thank you so much for your continued support. I also want to thank Catherine for her PayPal donation. So sorry it's taken me so long to get that out on a video. That was so generous of you. Uh, most of the videos I've released recently were older videos. So I didn't want to forget to thank you. Um, that was so kind and generous of you. I so appreciate that. And um, like I said, if you haven't taken Shelly's course, there's a 15% off promo code in the description box below. Anything on Color Arts website, 20% off. There's a promo code there for you as well. And obviously I'm a huge Color Art fan for obvious reasons. Look at that. Look at that. Um... The putting on the glitz set is still available. Uh, it's like magical, and um, they work great in blooms, obviously. Um, we also have the Color Art Facebook group. It's called Acrylic Pouring with Color Art, and we run contests and we share tips. I try very hard to share tips with you guys, videos that may be helpful. Um, Videos that show people using their pigments, because that's always helpful. So, join the group. And thank you guys so much for all your support. Have a great day and Happy New Year.